Hello dear friends, this subject is very thorny because there are many apocalyptic theories, difficult to believe, with many different names and many false predictions have been made. But I will try to summarize it as best as I can. I'll keep other related topics in the back of my mind so as not to make it too long. Opinion peace. Does the sun have a naughty twin brother? That's the nemesis star hypothesis. It would be the sun of Nibiru, according to these theories. It has many names and there are many theories. Nemesis is a hypothetical red or brown dwarf star, not to be confused with the ninth planet or Tiche. They say it would explain the instability of the Earth. The theory of the planet Ercopolis also returns. Nancy Leade prof prophesied the cataclysm of Nibiru, in quotes. Its objective would be the purification of the terrestrial aura. Let's start. I have known about the Nemesis star hypothesis for many years. I talked about a supposedly Michiba's twin brother of the Sun, but I never fully believed in it for lack of evidence. However, now this topic is becoming fashionable in the mystery forums, so I have again raised the possibility of its existence, since updated information is coming out of the subject to explain the great the great inst instability that we have living on earth with earthquakes tsunamis floods fires etc and even wikipedia talks about it but this is not to be confused with the hypothetical planets tiche or the so-called ninth planet but, of course, such instability could have other explanations such as the solar system would be passing throughout an interstellar cloud or a strange area of the galaxy charged with high energy, which the alternative media have been calling for years the photon belt, talked about by German astronomer Paul Otto Hesse and the contactee Sheldon Nidal. The photon belt concept predicted a form of interaction between the Earth and Alcyon, the largest star in the Pleiades cluster. All are hypotheses, but we are not sure of anything. The passage of the solar system throughout the different parts of the galaxy could be partially responsible for the terrestrial changes we are experiencing, such as solar change, climate change, tectonic activity, massive animal deaths, and the shifting of the magnetic poles. Era change. All this would also be related to the change of era. We are currently living the Piscean era to enter the Aquarian era. In reality, we would have already partially entered, although we have not yet transcended duality, and the awakening of the American continent is taking place, which could be the epicenter of the new humankind. This, the, the Piscean era began with the birth of Jesus. In every era there is an avatar, and it is precisely Jesus who belongs to that era. Jesus came to teach us many things, among them to discover the Christ Self that is in each one of us, inside and not outside. In pieces there is an exhibition of duality, as seen in the image of the two fishes 
each one oriented to opposite poles. Also, in the age of Pisces, there is a mission to sacrifice in order to save oneself, and there is the belief that someone is needed to save people. In the Aquarian age, the age of individual enlightenment and brotherhood of the human being, will only fully manifest after a process of purification. Aquarius, the sign of the human being, will take over. Therefore, there would no longer be a need to follow anyone. In the image of Aquarius, there is, there is a man pouring, pouring water as a symbol of understanding and maturity to come out of duality. But it is not a water sign, but an air sign. Nibiru. They say that Nibiru will reach its closest position between Mars and Jupiter, but Nemesis Nibiru Sun would have an immense magnetic attraction and a large amount of debris in its tail, including several moons. The second sun would be Nemesis, the binary partner of our sun. They say that the Anunnaki's home planet would be Nibiru, one of the seven planets orbiting Nemesis, but I don't much believe the Charya Sitchin's accounts either. And they say that currently the Nemesis system would be meshing with the solar system, which would be contributing to the instability that Earth is experiencing. It would be possible but massive chain trails, camp trails would have been sprayed to try to block it until the last minute. Nibiru would technically be part of its system, as both stars form a binary system. The so-called Nibiru cataclysm would be a supposed disastrous encounter between Earth and a large planetary object. Believers in this case of the end of the world usually refer to this object as Nibiru or Planet X. The idea was first put forward in 1995 by Nancy Lederer, founder of the ZetaDoc website. Lederer describes herself as a contacted with the ability to receive messages from the Zeta Reticuli star system throughout an implant in her brain. She claims she was chosen to warn humankind that the object would pass throughout the solar system, causing the Earth to undergo a physical pole shift that would destroy most of humankind. Ercobolus Ercobolus or Ercolubus or red planet has aroused curiosity in many followers of spiritual philosophies. Ercobolus or Ercolubus is a planet rebuilt in the second half of the 20th century, possibly by the Brazilian medium and lawyer Ercilio Maes. Several astrologers prophesied that Ercolubus would be approaching the planet Earth, and would be the cause of the end of the world. Ercobolus would be found in a supposed solar system called Tilo, which would be approaching the Earth. The writer Rabolu cited astronomical data that he considers relevant to take into account the supposed threat of Tilo. Among this data would be its size six times bigger than Jupiter, and that the action of its gigantic gravitational field would be the producer of a great catastrophe. According to Rabolu, in his book, Ercobolus would have passed by the Earth some 13,000 years ago, destroying the ancient civilization of Atlantis. Rabolu 
who is a follower of the neo-gnostic doctrine proclaimed by the Colombian writer Samael Aumbeor or Victor Manuel Gómez, maintains that the objective of the approach of the supposed Ercobolus would be the purification of the terrestrial aura. Many followers of the doctrines of Colombian Gnosticism maintain that Ercobolus is the known extrasolar planet WASP5b orbiting the star WASP5 in the constellation of the Phoenix, but this constellation is 967 light years away from us. Some websites state that Ercobolus is Barnard, Barnard's star, but this star is just under six light years from Earth. The closest star to the Sun is Alpha Centauri, just over four light years away. Nemesis. Nemesis is a high political red dwarf or brown dwarf originally postulated in 1984 to orbit the Sun at a distance of one and a half light years, somewhat beyond the old cloud, to explain a perceived cycle of mass extinctions in the geological, in the geologic record which appear to occur most frequently at 26 million year intervals. Calculations in the 1980s suggested that a nemesis object would have an irregular orbit due to galaxy perturbations and passing stars. Believers in Planet X or Nibiru have often confused it with nemesis a hyperelical star first proposed by physicist Richard Muller. Miller. In 1984, Miller postulated that mass extinctions were not random, but appeared to occur in the fossil record with a flexible periodicity ranging from 26 to 34 million years. He attributed this supposed pattern to a Heisako and detective companion of the Sun, either a faint red dwarf or a brown dwarf, dwarf which is on 26 million year elliptical orbit. This object, which, which he named Nemesis, would pass once every 26 million years throughout the Oort cloud, the shell of more than a trillion icy objects that is believed to be the source of long period comets orbiting thousands of times Pluto's distance from the Sun. Nemesis gravity would per perturb the comet's orbits and send them into the interior of the solar system, causing us to be bombarded. Planet X Believers in Planet X or Nibiru have given it many names since it was first proposed. All are, in fact, names of other real, hypothetical or imaginary objects in the solar system, but bear little resemblance to the planet described by Lieder or to Nibiru described by Sitchin. Lieder extracted the name Planet X from the hypothetical planet one sought by astronomers to explain discrepancies in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. In 1894, Boston astronomer Percival Lowell became convinced that the planets Uranus and Neptune had slight discrepancies in their orbits. He concluded that they were being dragged by the gravity of another more distant planet, which he named Planet X. Planet 9 is a hypothetical planet in the outer region of the solar system. Its gravitational effects could explain the unlikely 
clustering of orbits for a group of object, objects beyond Neptune that orbits the Sun at distances averaging more than 20 than 250 times that of Earth. Sedna or Eris. Other people also confuse Nibiru with Sedna or Eris. Objects beyond Neptune discovered by Mike Brown in 2003 and 2005 respectively. However, despite being described as a tenth planet in a NASA press release, Eris is now classified as a dwarf planet. Only slightly more massive than Pluto, Eris has a well-determined orbit that never brings it closer to Earth than, than 5.5 billion kilometers. Sedna is slightly smaller than Pluto and never gets closer to Earth than 11.4 billion kilometers. Mike Brown believes that the confusion results from the fact that both the real Sedna and the imaginary Nibiru have extremely elliptical orbits. Tiche. Others have related it to Tiche, the name first proposed in 1999 by astrophysicists John Matisse, Patrick Whiteman and Daniel Whitemeyer of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette for an object they believed is influencing the orbits of comets in the Oort cloud. Tiche would be a hypothetical gas giant located in our solar system's Oort cloud. They argued that evidence for Tiche's existence could be seen in a supposed bias in the points of origin of long period comets. Two comets. Some associated Nibiru with comet a Lenin, a long-period comet discovered by Russian astronomer Leonid Elenin on December 10, 2010. On October 16, 2011, Elenin made its closest approach to Earth at a distance of nearly 35 million kilometers, slightly closer than the planet Venus. However, Claims spread on conspiracy websites concluded that it was on a collision course, that it was a, as big as Jupiter or even a brown dwarf. In August 2011, Comet Lenin began to disintegrate and at the time of its closest approach in October 2011, the comet was undetected even by large telescopes. On September 21st, 2012, Vitaly Nevsky and Artyom Novichok, Novichonok discovered comet Ison. On May 8, 2014, a detailed examination of the comet's disintegration was published, suggesting that the comet completely disintegrated hours before perihelion. This whole story demonstrates the confusion about the possible cause of the current destabilization of Earth's equilibrium. But what is certain is that not everything that is happening is normal. I wouldn't simplify everything into a single cause, but into many causes because every effect can have multiple concomitant causes according to the law of synchronicity. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.